Hello, my name is Charlene Dobmeyer. I'm the president of Kingsley Publishing Services. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight to the launch of Gordon Freeman's book, Canada's Stonehenge, Astounding Archaeological Discoveries in Canada, England, and Wales. And I'd like to thank Page's Bookstore for hosting the event. It's been a real pleasure and an honor to work with Gord in bringing this book to the public. Many of you know that Gordon Freeman has been a long time chemical physicist at the University of Alberta, but he's had a passion for archaeology since he was a young child growing up on the prairies. The book that he has written has changed history. He spent more than 28 years of his life along with his wife Phil researching the information that you'll find in the book. It's had an incredible impact already in international communities, especially online. So without further ado, I'd like to call up Gord and ask him to set up his slideshow, and I hope you enjoy the evening. Thanks for coming. So I'm going to uh, take you on a little journey talking mostly about uh, the site in Alberta. But since it had uh, implications that stretched across the ocean, I'll give the last maybe quarter of the talk about Stonehenge. People have asked how a chemical physicist got involved in archaeology. Uh, when I was a kid, sort of between five and eight, my father was a CPR station agent in uh, Saskatchewan, and the dry winds were blowing tilled soil away. And so some summer Sunday afternoons, he would take the family out to look for uh, stone tools in the, in the blowouts, in the when the tilled soil had been blown away and left stones on a clay hard pan, amongst those stones sometimes there would be a, uh, a spearhead or an arrowhead or a knife or a scraper, something like that, pieces of pottery, sun-baked pottery. And so many years later when he died, I inherited a third of his collection and uh, it, part of it hung on my office wall at home for many years, and I finally started to wonder about these shapes of these stones, what kind of stones. So I started to pester uh, geologists to find out about different kinds of stones, archaeologists to find out what the shapes meant. And over the years, they taught me enormous amounts. But I guess uh, <laughs> the archaeologists finally got tired of the pestering, and they said, hey, have you ever heard of Jim McGregor? No. Well, James G. McGregor was a retired electrical engineer who, before he died, published 18 books of Western history. So that's what a passionate amateur can do. Well, he had a fabulous, he, he and his wife scoured uh, along the Saskatchewan River uh, in the late 50s and early 60s. They had a fabulous collection. And so uh, I pestered him for a couple of years, and I guess when he'd had enough, he said, Gord, I bet I know a bunch of places that you and Phil would love to visit. Patterns of stone on the ground and carved rocks. They call them rib stones, medicine wheels, and things like that, cairns. So he drew me a map how to find 15 of these things in southern Alberta, and Phil and I drove 4,500 kilometers in eight days uh, visited, photographed all of these places, and farmers along the way showed us two more. And uh, what the archaeologists and Jim had told us about all these places seemed fine except for this one place, because there was supposed to be just a ring of stones on the top of the hill. And as we were walking up the hill, there were patterns of stones all over the place. My life career, what they paid me to do for 37 years, uh, was complex systems in chemistry and physics, and pattern recognition is the uh, strongest uh, analytical tool. And so I'm automatically hooked into recognizing patterns when I see them. And patterns in biology and patterns in geology, patterns in, in lightning strokes, if you see similar patterns, you can take them back nearly always to similar mechanisms. They don't involve the same entities, but the general mechanisms are the same. Anyway, as we were walking up this hill, I saw patterns all over the place. So I photographed them, brought them back, showed them to a number of archaeologists in Edmonton, and they said, 
the only stones moved by man were those in the medicine wheel. Everything else is just where the glacier dropped them 10,000 years ago. And, <laughs> well, Mother Nature is extremely creative, but she didn't make these engineered piles of stones uh, wedged and forming uh, accurate shapes and so on. So uh, I thought they were wrong, and uh, there was my hobby. Thank you.